Good qualifying is one of the most underrated ways to improve your super speedway results, but what is there even to get better at? Isn't it just full throttle the whole way around? Well, today I'm gonna introduce a couple tips and tricks that should increase your lap times immediately by up to a tenth of a second and maybe even more. But before we get to that, look what came in the mail today. This shirt is honestly a lot better quality than I expected. It's an athletic spandex type and it's got the full print here. It looks really good. It's not gonna wash out. And if you want to pick up one of these for yourself and help out the channel, visit the link in the description or go to arcafarm.bigcartel.com and order one for yourself. All right, the context I'm going to be doing this video in is Arca at Talladega, but pretty much every single point here is going to overlap with all other types of super speedway qualifying. So it all actually starts on pit road. The number one thing about getting up to speed is you want to keep your tires as cool as possible because in super speedways, Colder tires equals slightly faster lap time. We're not talking by much, but by little. So I'm not gonna spin the tires coming out of pit road. I'm gonna get up to speed really, really, really slowly. Just really easy. Just really making sure not to hear my tires at all. And then what I wanna do is when I get a little bit above 100 miles an hour, I'm just going to keep the car at about 101 miles an hour or so. This is kind of the speed limit that you can't go under with the current iRacing patch. And we call this kind of cheese. It is a little cheesy, but also there's nothing to it besides just keeping your car at 101, 102 miles an hour. And I want to let everyone know this because I think it's a little unfair to have a trick like this and just not have everybody know it. I think that as many people should know this trick as possible. And again, this is not going to save you a ton of time, but it's going to save you a little. So I like to go full throttle just before turn three. This is about the limit that it gets before um, you are full speed at the start finish line of lap two. If you go any later than this, then you're not going to have enough speed at the line. Okay. So we're just going to do our out lap normally. I'm just going to kind of run the second, third lane here. I don't like running right by the wall. I don't think it gets too much. But the big thing on Outlap is just to keep your steering inputs as smooth as possible. One minute, 20.243. So I don't get right by the wall, but I get kind of close and make sure not to, not to turn my steering wheel too much. Because each little bit that you turn your steering wheel is speed that you are scrubbing off the tires. And this is gonna be another big thing in our hot lap. And then by the way, the paint I'm running right now is the same paint that's on my shirt. If you want to run that paint, the link will be in the description. But as we come into the outlap here, same thing, kind of get close to the wall, but we're just going to hold the wheel as smooth as possible. And just really be easy with the steering inputs, smooth as possible. Now I'm going to start pointing my car towards the start finish line and get about about a lane from the bottom by the time we are at the flag. 54 point five two four. And I'm gonna get right by the yellow line on entry and try to do all my turning at the very beginning and just hold the wheel for the entire corner. I wanna do pretty much no wheel inputs the entire corner. Now off the corner, I'm only gonna unload the wheel. You see how I let the car slide up about a lane there? That was purely just from holding the wheel and coming back to center. No extra turning. So now I'm going to point the car at the yellow one more time, get my initial turning, and then just hold the wheel. Just trust in the angle, and then let the car slide up about a lane and unload the wheel. And then at Talladega, in low-powered cars, we do not take the apron. So no taking the apron here, just hold it as close to the yellow line as possible, and then unload. 53.24 and 53.24 is actually going to get you pull on pretty much every race at Talladega in the Arca car. So those are the things that should stay constant throughout all combos for super speedway qualifying, but there are some things that you're going to have to test yourself to see which is faster between the two choices between each combo. And the first thing is which lap the hot lap should even be. So I know I did all that talk about tire cooling, but sometimes the first lap is even faster than the second lap because you only have to make one lap around the track. 
Now, the last time I saw that be the case, I think was trucks at Talladega. I usually think that the cars that can get up to speed the fastest are the ones that can take advantage of it, but that's why you have to test it. Sometimes it's not completely intuitive. And the second thing you have to test yourself is whether to use the apron or not. Usually at Daytona, it's a good idea to use the apron coming to the finish line, but sometimes the car just can't handle the transition and the bumps in a way that makes it worth any time. And even if you gain time, it would only be like one hundredth of a second or something, and maybe you don't want to take that risk. But at places like Talladega, where the start finish line is all the way at the end, your car really needs to handle the bumps well to get through that in a way where you're gaining time. So that's something that you're going to have to test. And then finally, the last thing you have to test is next gen specific, where you don't even know whether you need to be in fourth or fifth gear for qualifying. In this run right here, I thought I initially had to be in fifth gear, but the revs felt really low. So I tried another lap with the same everything except doing it in fourth gear, and I gained a good chunk of time. So sometimes that's not even obvious. So using this table, you have to try out all the permutations, maybe. Sometimes one option will be obvious over another, and you can just pick that and move on. But combined with all of the strategies we talked about earlier, with getting the most out of your lap, putting that all together, that's how you're going to get those few hundredths of a second that may be the difference between getting a pole and starting outside the top 10. Hopefully with these tips, you'll find some extra missing hundredths you've been struggling to find, and maybe you'll be able to qualify to position yourself to be in front of the big one for the race. But who knows? It's super speedway racing. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all on the track.